Grand Theft Auto Online certainly wasn't a guaranteed success. Even if it was launching as a multiplayer mode in one of the best selling games of all time, in 2013, no one had any idea how much of a phenomenon and money making machine it would become. It had a troubled start, but thanks to a bunch of constant updates, tweaks, and next generation remaster, Grand Theft Auto Online has come to completely overshadow the main game. Now, I absolutely love Grand Theft Auto Online. I think it's one of the best games that Rockstar has created, but today we're going to be talking about nine ways in which GTA Online has ruined the Grand Theft Auto series. So as always with discussion videos like this, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. Let me know the ways in which you think GTA Online has made GTA worse overall. Let's get the discussion going in the comments. So this is in no particular order. Let's start at the number nine spot today. And that is a longer wait between games. So while Rockstar used to consistently pump out new games in the early 2000s, now it takes them years to produce sequels across their franchises. So it took Rockstar five years to craft Grand Theft Auto V, a milestone that they're actually gonna pass in 2018. And with no sequel announcement on the horizon and no sign of online winding down anytime soon, us players could still have a few more years to wait before we get another entry into the GTA franchise. I think it's gonna be probably six, seven, maybe even eight years before GTA 6 even starts to sniff kind of the surface. So I think the success of online has caused a much longer wait to the next Grand Theft Auto game. Number eight, the new updates seem to punish people who aren't consistently playing. So the system of online isn't perfect, and it should be noted that while the content is technically free, you're still gonna need to pay for it some way with in-game cash. And just about everything Rockstar has released so far requires you to pony up the dollars you've earned from completing either missions, heist, or knocking over liquor stores. And while some of these costs are negligible, the major updates can set you back millions. And if you're not constantly in the game grinding out activities and keeping a steady flow of money coming in, there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to enjoy a lot of the new updates. And lapsed players who may be enticed to come back thanks to a new DLC will either be forced to grind out missions they're already tired of or buy a shark card with real money so they can access it instantly. Basically, keeping up to date in Grand Theft Auto Online isn't affordable and the inflating prices only encourage people to resort to microtransactions so they don't miss out on content. Number seven, it alienates players without a squad. So basically, it's really tough to be a lone wolf in Grand Theft Auto Online. Going solo in GTA Online isn't the way the game is supposed to be played. And while it can be fun in spurts, going in as a lone wolf can result in you missing out on the best things multiplayer has to offer. For example, the heist missions, they're designed to be from two to four players, and even the original ones are all four players. So if you can't do that, if you're a lone wolf, it's also very difficult to do the business stuff by yourself as you're gonna be exposed to other groups and businesses that are gonna try and take you down. So unfortunately, there's no way to just be by yourself and still be successful as well as you could in Grand Theft Auto Online. You need a squad, a group of friends, or a crew in order to get started. And that, of course, all depends on your personality. I'm certainly more of that lone wolf type. And yeah, sometimes it is hard in order to get something like that started. So again, I don't know how Rockstar can ultimately fix that, but I, I do think that is an issue. Uh, at the number six spot today, humor, satire, and personality are completely absent. So never just being wacky for the sake of it, GTA has always attempted to present a twisted, satirical version of the American dream, drawing its humor from exaggerated characters and situations they get themselves into. Unfortunately, outside of the goofy to muddle the franchise's identity as a whole. For example, I wasn't a huge fan of the Smuggler's Run update, and while the Doomsday Heist was pretty cool, it did seem a little bit wacky and over the top. At the number five spot today, every mechanic has to be tied to making money. So if a new gameplay activity doesn't have the potential to make Rockstar and Take-Two interactive money, then it's not gonna find its way into online. As previously mentioned, the DLC packs let players loose to do things like becoming a CEO of a company or lead a biker gang, but all these activities require a lot of in-game cash to take part in. The idea is that players will resort to shark cards to keep up with those cost of updates, but this economy has meant that activities that don't have the potential to promote microtransactions haven't been added. Huge additions like opening the casino have been sought after for years, but because it would complicate the economy and give players another way to make and lose money, it hasn't happened. Likewise, when online was in its infancy, the ability for gamers to play the stock market was promised, but it was never materialized. 
potentially also because it introduced an uncontrollable way for players to make cash. Now, all of this does make sense from a business perspective, but GTA 5 is one of the most successful video games of all times, and updates that don't actively try and bleed you dry would be appreciated. I think the last one we ended up getting was Cunning Stunts, which was back in 2016. Number four, story expansions have been replaced with online DLC. The Ballad of Gay Tony and even the Lost in the Dam for GTA 4 were tighter and far funnier than the entirety of the main game. And even outside of GTA, Rockstar have continued to prove that they're the kings of DLC expansions, with Undead Nightmare for Red Dead Redemption also being a fan favorite. Unfortunately, the shift to online has resulted in there being no story expansions for GTA 5. Despite alluding to it before release, a major DLC pack for single player was never materialized, much to the chagrin of fans of the series. The online DLC is fine, but it doesn't come close to the polish or the ambition found in Rockstar story expansions and far from makes up from their absence. At the number three spot, sometimes it can be a little bit of quantity over quality. So I especially see that with the drip feeding that occurs in online. So for example, the drip feed vehicle that released today when I'm making this video is the Ubermach Revolter. I think this is one of the worst vehicles of all time. I don't even think Rockstar should have added this vehicle into the game. So I would have loved if they had just not included that and then moved on to some more vehicles we're all excited about. Same with some of the updates. You get a really nice update, but then it has a bunch of little adversary modes stuck in there that aren't really all that great just to keep us going between releases. And that has led to some excruciating long gaps and it also can lead to some bad content on a weekly basis. And on top of that, it does seem like some of the DLC packs are hit or miss. For example, I really liked Gun Running, didn't like Smuggler's Run. I really enjoyed um, the Doomsday Heist, didn't enjoy Cunning Stunt Special Vehicle Circuit. So when you're only enjoying about 50% of the updates, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. The number two spot, the entire single player has been forgotten about. So we already discussed the fact that there's been no DLCs, but Rockstar doesn't add anything to Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, a few online vehicles have been shipped over there, but the vast majority of the DLC is only accessible by jumping into the multiplayer and paying it for in-game cash. Why the content doesn't make it over to the single player is anyone's guess, but one reason seems to be obvious, because it won't make Rockstar any money. If players can indulge in all the activities, vehicles, weapons, and cosmetic items offline, they might not be persuaded to fork out real money to access them in online. Unfortunately, that's meant the single player really isn't relevant anymore, and sadly hasn't really been since 2013. And at the number one spot today, the game is no longer consumer friendly. So for the longest time, the GTA series used to be the home to games that had the best value for money, providing players for years with huge titles that they could engross themselves in without getting tired, even when the industry started to move towards loot boxes and in-game purchases. Rockstar always seemed to be uninterested in following suit, until Grand Theft Auto Online, and now we see what happened today. And Rockstar is definitely trying to push microtransactions to constantly get players to shell out money on the daily, and that changing mentality has been increasingly noticeable in online, as content has become more expensive, and even as we look forward to future games, Red Dead Redemption 2 has confirmed that it will have microtransaction in online, and you can almost guarantee that the next installment in the GTA series, Grand Theft Auto 6, will as well. And I definitely think this is a tightrope that developers have to walk. We obviously saw what happened with EA and Star Wars Battlefront. So if not done right, the community can really turn on you. So Rockstar has to have, find a nice balance between what they want to do with microtransactions and what they want to offer as far as content goes as well. But anyways, that right there is nine ways in which I believe Grand Theft Auto Online has ruined the GTA series. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. Do you agree or do you disagree with my list? I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.